this short video is going to consider the important teaching that we can take from the verse in 1 John 4, verse 12, which says, no man has seen God at any time. As there are important implications as to the distinction between God and Jesus, who was, of course, seen by many people. Now, we always have to be careful with taking just one verse and creating some teaching from it. And when you look at the context of these words, it might seem odd to just put those words in there. In this chapter in John, uh, he's talking about the love of God and his message is that because he loved us, uh, we should love one another. And in the middle of this, he says, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. So what is the apostle trying to teach here? Well, that God hasn't been seen at any time is confirmed by other passages of scripture uh, in talking about God in uh, in his first epistle to the uh, disciple Timothy. First of, first of Timothy, chapter six, verse 15, he says, who is talking about God? He who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords who only has immortality, immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honour and power everlasting. Amen. And in chapter one of the same letter, verse 17, he says, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. And also in John chapter 6, verse 46, it says, Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. So this isn't just a, a one off throwaway line. This is something that is evidently true, and therefore there is a lesson to take out of it. If you took a brief look at the Old Testament, it might seem strange to say that no man has seen God, as it appears there are occasions that he does appear to men and women there. And one of those occasions is when God seems to appear to Moses at the burning bush. In verse four of Exodus chapter three, it says, God called unto him, that's Moses, out of the midst of the bush. And carrying on to verse six says, moreover, he said, I am thy God, the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. So was Moses actually looking upon God or not? Are those New Testament passages just wrong? Well, verse two of that same chapter tells us that it was the angel of the Lord that appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, verse 35, confirms that it was indeed the angel which appeared to him in the bush, and that God sent Moses to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. So Moses didn't see God, actually God himself. He saw an angel which was acting on God's behalf and so was called God in that instance. And something similar happens in Exodus 34. When God shows Moses his glory, in verse 5 to 6, we read these words. And the Lord descended in the cloud, stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And again, it is apparent that it isn't God himself that appears. This must again be his angel who for this purpose was given his name and is called the Lord or Yahweh in this instance in the Hebrew because he is working on God's behalf. And here he is revealing God's character to Moses. Now, this is a process that's sometimes called God manifestation or showing God. And it's an important idea to understand as it actually forms the heart of the gospel message because God wants believers to show his character in themselves. And he has provided Jesus to show us how that can be done. And so that is an, it's a really important principle to understand 
when we consider the relationship between God and Jesus. So we've just been reading, no man has seen God at any time, and yet many people saw Jesus. So Jesus can't actually be God, just as the angel wasn't actually God. But because he revealed God's character perfectly, Jesus could say, I and my father are one. And Thomas could exclaim, my Lord and my God, when he saw him after his resurrection. And just understanding that takes away all of the mysticism, the illogicality of the idea that somehow Jesus was God. It's a profound thing and yet very simple at the same time. John's Gospel, chapter one, verse 14, John says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Those same characteristics that were declared in Exodus chapter 34. See, Jesus was full of the character of God, and so this could be said of him. And verse 18 of that same chapter, chapter 1 of John, repeats what we've just read earlier. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He has showed him. See, Jesus wasn't God, just like the angel wasn't God. No man can see God, but he declared God's character perfectly and has therefore given us as an example to follow. So why does John use this idea when he's talking about love in his first prince, uh, epistle um, in the verse that we looked at? It's because he, he's saying we need to be like Jesus. Jesus wasn't God, but he gave us the example of how we should be like God. But look, if God so loved us, we also look, ought to love one another. But no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. If we do that in our, in our small way, we will be showing God to those around us. Jesus shared our human nature and he has shown us the way and we should try to follow him. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe below this video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.